All right. Well, Claire Bidwell-Smith, thank you so much for being a part of Grief Refuge. We're very glad you're here today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And we're very excited to talk about your book, Anxiety, the Missing Stage of Grief. I've got a series of questions I'd like to ask. Um, but first, thinking about anxiety and grief, I'm very curious. Um, a lot of the people I talk to who are experiencing grief, they can name anxiety but they can't necessarily name it as part of their grief experience. Are there any like things that through your expertise, have you recognized that help people make that connection? It's a, it's a slippery connection. It's a tough one. And I think that's why it wasn't recognized clinically for so long until recently. Um, I think people are surprised that they feel anxiety following a loss. They're surprised that they feel that kind of fear and uncertainty. For some people, they've had anxiety before in their lives and there's an uptick after they go through a big loss. For others, they've maybe never experienced anxiety and then they go through a significant loss and they're having panic attacks, for instance, or hypochondria. And it's, um, it's really startling for them. And then because anxiety manifests so often in physical symptoms, I think that that can be very misleading and people just don't connect the dots. I mean, when you're grieving, you're overwhelmed to begin with. So nothing is really making sense, right? You can't quite figure out anything. And a lot of times clients will come to me as a last resort. You know, they've gone to the ER with a panic attack or they've gone to see their physician, like something's wrong with me. And it's usually the medical community that will say, I think this is anxiety, you should see a therapist. And then they'll start to put the dots together and be like, gosh, could this be connected to my father's recent death? Um, and then that's when they Google grief and anxiety, you know? So I, uh, tying into this piece, um, I'm totally assuming here, a lot of people, when they experience anxiety, they like, give me the meds, right? But if the doctor says, maybe you should talk to a therapist, do you notice like a lot of resistance um, to that therapeutic process, grief related, anxiety related, all the above? I think it depends. I don't think I see the resistant people that often. Um, I think I see the people who are either really willing to come in and want help or who really feel like there's no other choice. Um, and when you're at the point where there's no other choice, you're usually pretty willing to do the work just to get through what it is you're going through. What I see resistance around is some of the more intricate pieces of the work. Um, for instance, I, you know, use a lot of mindfulness, meditation, cognitive behavioral therapy in terms, in ways of getting through that anxiety. And those are the pieces where people are like, I don't want to meditate. I don't want to make thought charts. You know, <laughs> what is mindfulness? And so kind of working on some of those pieces to help them understand what it is, why it's going to help. Um, those are the pieces where usually we have to push through a little resistance. Okay. So I think you answered the question I'm going to ask. Um, but let's see if we can dive deeper into it. With, with your book, Anxiety, the, Miss the Missing Stage of Grief, there's this aspect of like, I like how you first start naming, you know, let's define our terms. Let's define what anxiety is. Let's define what grief is. And let's look for a common thread. Can you share a little bit about, again, through your expertise in writing the book and also some of your therapeutic practice, can you share pieces of those roadblocks that people have when they can't make that connection for themselves? Yeah. I mean, I think one of the biggest issues there is with it is that there's a lot of unaddressed grief um, underneath the anxiety. That's a big part of the anxiety is unaddressed grief. And that's largely due to our culture. Um, we're not great at holding space for grief, at helping people move through it, helping them understand what it is, what it looks like. So people are afraid and to kind of enter into the grief process. It's also really overwhelming. Grief can be very, you know, debilitating in some ways for periods of time. And so I think people try to run away from it. Um, and so when people come into me with grief related anxiety, the very first thing I do is more than the anxiety, I look at their grief process. You know, how long has it been since your person died? 
What has it been like in that time? Sometimes it's been six weeks. Sometimes it's been five years. Um, what's the arc of that grief? How was it in the beginning? How is it now? Are there pieces that you feel like you're stuck in? Um, are there places that you feel like you've skipped or are afraid to dive into? Um, so we begin really looking at that. You know, I got into all of this because my parents died when I was young. Um, they both got cancer at the same time when I was 14. My mother died when I was 18. And I, I was a mess, you know, and, and everyone at the time was like, oh, you're 18, you're fine, you've got your life ahead of you, just go on. But my mom, it was my mom, and we had been so close, and I'm an only child. And so I tried to just move on, which didn't work, had all this unaddressed grief, started having panic attacks. At that time, the medical community was like, oh, you just have heart palpitations. So I had like a whole mess of unaddressed things. Um, and so that's often where so much of this anxiety burbles up. So the, your book has this, the way I thumbed through it and read parts of it. Honestly, I didn't read all of it. I just read parts in preparation for That's this okay. interview. And I got this sense that like, it guides me through a process or it, you know, guides me through things. By the way, that assessment, I think was the assessment at the end of chapter one or chapter two. That That's a really good assessment. Thanks. Um, did you come up with that? I did. I've never written an assessment, but it made sense to me. Yeah, that was a really good one. Um, really helpful for the user um, tying in the anxiety and grief because I come with this this assumption to our interview of like people see anxiety in their lives they see grief in their grief in their life but they just don't see the two having such a, a solid connection together yeah. and so that's why I was like oh I really want to talk to you about your book because you're helping bridge that gap but um, coming back to the question, we're looking at, you know, you're providing kind of this, this healing guide um, in the book. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say, like, I wanted to ask, how is grief related anxiety similar or different? That is something that we, quote, overcome in life when I think both of us agree that grief in and of itself is not something we necessarily overcome, something we learn to live with. So what about the anxiety piece? How does that play into it? That's a great question because you're right. We never get over the loss of someone that we love. Um, we learn to live with it. We learn to incorporate that loss into who we are, into our lives. And we also learn to have a new relationship with the person that we loved. Um, but anxiety is something that doesn't need to stick around. We can get over anxiety. Um, we don't need to have anxiety all of our lives. You know, I mean, a low level of anxiety, of course, we all do as humans. It's what gets us up in the morning. It's what helps us prepare for a talk or go on a trip. You know, you've got to have a little anxiety about things. That's normal. But the kind of anxiety we're talking about when people come into therapy for, we don't need to have that all the time. Um, and so it is important to tease apart these two things and to help someone move through their grief process and begin to incorporate that loss into their lives and to, again, develop this kind of new relationship with their loved one, while at the same time learning tools to diminish the anxiety. But the anxiety makes so much sense because when you lose someone really significant in your life, perhaps for the first time, the whole floor drops out. The world is a completely new place. It's like you've been dropped onto a new planet and it's terrifying in some ways. You know, you have to learn how to be in this whole new world where everything is so precarious and you suddenly realize that nothing is certain, nothing is safe, not that it ever was, but you were living under an illusion of it until now. And we don't have to live like that for the rest of our lives. That's something we can come to understand, get used to in some ways. And then there are obvious tools to work on the anxiety itself. There's a lot of wisdom in your answer to that. And I deeply resonate with it. It's really got me thinking, knowing that parts of your story is shared in the book and also losing your parents at a young age in life. I'm curious about commonalities of anxiety experience with grief. Um, in your expertise, do you see differences in phases of life? Like are middle-aged people less or more anxious in grief-related experiences because they've perhaps experienced some deaths um, more frequently than not? Or uh, where, where do we gauge how anxious someone is in their grief in like stages of uh, life as far as years lived? Mm -hmm. 
I think it really depends on the loss on the person. Um, I, I've seen the same levels of anxiety in a 20 year old as in a 70 year old. Um, and it, it depends on the loss. You know, the 70 year old could have experienced other losses in their life, obviously, but you don't get to that age without going through some amount of loss. But maybe a 70 year old woman loses her husband of, you know, 45 years and the anxiety sets on in a massive way. Um, same goes for a 20 year old um, who, you know, probably hasn't gone through much loss, but has the same level of anxiety. Um, and so it just, it really depends on personality type, on the loss, on the relationship, on the kind of death. How did it happen? Was it traumatic? Was it a long illness? Did you have a chance to say goodbye? All of these things factor in. And then as far as writing the book itself, when I hear the word anxiety, I can often feel more of it in my own experience. If it's like on the forefront of my mind or it's the topic of conversation. Truthfully, I've been more anxious about our interview than <laughs> other interviews I've done. And I'm like, it must be our topic. <laughs> but what was it like for you to write a book about anxiety and grief? Did you have some of your own? For me, it was fine. I've been working on my own anxiety for so long. And I, I've really come to a place where, you know, it's never gone completely, but when it arises, I, it doesn't affect me in the ways that it used to. I can look at it from a, from a distance in a way and just be like, oh, there's some anxiety. Okay. I'm going to put it over here and keep going with what I'm doing. Um, however, you bring up an interesting thing when clients come in to see me, it is anxiety provoking for them to start to talk about it and to start to do this work. And in person or even over Zoom, it's much easier to comfort them, to soothe them through it and to be like, okay, look, we're gonna talk about it. How are you feeling right now? Like, let's maybe stop and breathe for a minute. Let's get you into a calmer space um, and like kind of prep them that we're gonna talk about some pieces of it. If you start feeling anxious, let me know but I can't do that in a book. So I tried to write that book in the warmest way I could, you know, and trying to um, help readers feel comfortable as we went along. And I think in several places I addressed, if you're feeling anxious while you're reading this, you know, here's some things to do, but it was a different experience to write it than to do the in-person work. I'm glad you voiced that because I definitely heard that in some of the tone of your writing, there was a, some softness some gentleness and, yeah. I, I feel like you, you helped hold space for somebody who may just be more getting more familiar with the experience mm -hmm. of making these two connections. And so it felt very inviting is what I'm trying to say. So, so thank you thank for you. speaking that because it's definitely shows up in the tone of your writing in this too. And, um, in the process of writing it, knowing that this was your third published book, correct? Mm -hmm. Was there anything that surprised you or was there any um, awesome discovery you made as you piece this together? Um, you know, this, this was my third book. It was the most clinical of my books. So that was a different experience. My very first book is a straight up literary memoir about losing my parents and moving through my own grief. And I, I grew up wanting to be a writer, not wanting to be a therapist, let alone a grief therapist. I just wanted to be like a literary author. So that book was very much born of that and born of the experience I went through. Um, and my second book is called After This, When Life is Over, Where Do We Go? And that's kind of a hybrid. I was a therapist at that point and I was really curious about how different views of the afterlife affect our grief process. And so I went kind of on my own personal journey looking into different things about the afterlife. I spoke with rabbis and priests. I got into shamanism. I did like a past life regression. I um, went to see psychic mediums, but I was also looking at it for my clients. You know, they come in with these things. I think it's almost a stage of grief itself to kind of question the meaning of life, question why we're here, what happens when we go, where do we go? Are we still connected to our people? Can they see us? Will we see them again? Um, I, I have yet to see many clients who don't have those questions. So that's what that book was about. And then this one felt like my most practical clinical book, but it felt so important to me. Nobody was talking about this. I wrote an article about six years ago that went up on slate.com and it was entitled the same as the book, Anxiety, the Missing Stage of Grief. And that article to date 
has brought me more clients than any talks I've given, any books I've written, because people will Google anxiety plus grief, and that will be the first thing that pops up, and nobody had written anything about it up until then. And so then I would get these emails, and people would say, is this real? Is this a thing? Anxiety and grief? And I would say, I think so. <laughs> and then I got all these clients who were going through it. And so for years, I was seeing anxious, grieving clients. And I, I felt like I had to write this book for all of them and put this out there for people. So as you formulate words on pages, did it help you um, perhaps feel a little bit grounded too? Like now that like we're forming some literature here? Yeah, um, it was a little intimidating, you know, just to start writing something that no other clinicians were talking about. Um, but it, the reception to it has been immense and people seem to be talking about this, this um, correlation more than ever now, which I'm really happy about. And the book itself was really quite easy to write because I had just been doing this work for so many years at that point, And I knew exactly what my process was for helping somebody through it. So it was pretty easy to break down into how I was going to put it in the book. Well, I tell you what, I, I didn't realize this until this moment. You're a pioneer in this, this correlative um, perspective of yeah. emotions. Yeah, wow. it was, it's a little funny. Um, I, was, I felt really strongly about the title, um, Anxiety, the Missing Stage of Grief. We came up, the, the publishers were kind of playing around with lots of different ideas. Um, but I felt like that is the title that gives people that aha moment of like, oh, wait, is that what my anxiety is about? It's about my grief or that kind of thing. And so I, I really pushed for that. And I love Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. I am a huge fan of hers. Um, I am so grateful for her work. She was the ultimate pioneer in the grief world. You know, I mean, she was doing things nobody was talking about. Um, and she laid the groundwork for so much of the grief knowledge that we have today. However, I think it needs to be expanded on and it should be as any work should be, you know, any kind of medical work or clinical psychology, psychological work. Um, it always gets to be built upon and expanded on. So I felt like adding this in as a stage of grief um, was important and necessary. Most definitely. I'm also drawn to uh, something you shared about your personal story in the introduction, and it was the experience of your first panic attack. And we're gonna fast forward to where we are in the moment and knowing that you've gained so much knowledge and experience and wisdom for that matter, there's this question that I just have to ask. If, sure. if you could go back to that moment when you were in the ER and that doctor, um, you know, as you st they stayed in the introduction, the doctor just did not have the, the psychological training what do you wish, looking back now, what do you wish that doctor would have asked you? I just wish he would have asked me if there was anything stressful going on in my life. You know, um, obviously I was a healthy 18 year old and they, they did every medical test possible, EKGs, and they had me running on a treadmill and they took blood work and asked me if I did drugs, which I didn't, all these things, you know, so they came up empty and then they were like, oh, you're, you know, one in 10 people has heart palpitations. And if he had just said, you know, what's going on in your life? And, and I would have said, well, my parents have cancer. My mother's gravely ill. I'm about to go to college 1500 miles away. You know, um, those were some big anxiety pieces that, that I wasn't putting the dots together with because I was so young, I didn't know anything. And I think if he had said that and recognized for himself that I was probably under a lot of stress, it, I could have gotten to this a little faster, but instead I actually spent the next five years having anxiety attacks and panic attacks and hypochondria. And, and it was, it was really tough. It wasn't until I was in a psychology class and learning about PTSD and trauma, which, you know, on some level, you could say that I went through a trauma with my mother's death, but not compared to a lot of other traumas, but I was seeing a lot of the same reactions, you know? So I finally began to put the pieces together. That's fantastic. Well, one last question. Sure. I'm sure you get a lot of messages about the book. You mentioned the Slate article, and so that led to the book. So I'm like, gosh, I'm sure Claire gets a lot of emails, a lot of you know social media messages, whatever we get these days <laughs> about um, gratitudes and appreciations. What are some of the common themes you're hearing from people who pick up anxiety, the missing stage of grief? <laughs> 
have just a lot of relief of recognition um, of what they're going through. I feel like the simplest part of my job, which is also the biggest part of it, is to give people permission to grieve, to give them permission to feel everything they're feeling. And so putting these books out there, even my personal one, just lets people know they're not alone in what they're going through and that um, all the scary feelings or the feelings they may feel ashamed of or unsure of, um, that they're normal and they're okay. And it's part of being human and it's part of grieving. And so I, in those gratitude messages, they almost always say, you know, some idea around that, like you named what I was going through. It made me feel so much better to know that someone else out there feels this way or that I'm not alone. Um, it made me feel able to start working on it. Um, so that, that to me is, you know, more than I could ask for. That's fantastic. Well, Claire, keep up the great pioneering work. I'm sure you're just getting started and um, thanks for being a part of Grief Refuge. Thank you so much for having me and for holding space for these conversations.